Welcome to Gafet in the Daf. I'm El Shimoni, bringing to you together with Hadran in Yeshivat Risha, learning Daf Yomi and taking it a little further. And today we're going to do something very special. I want to learn the Tzot with you. Tzot Siman Kuf Pechet in Choshen Mishpat. That is uh, using our sugi as proof to a very interesting thesis that he has regarding the question whether or not there can be shlichut after the death of the Meshalech. So I want to start from looking at the Gemara and looking at a few uh, things that we learned in Shulchan Aruch and, and Rambam that will be basis for reading the Ketzot. We'll see how the Ketzot uses our sugi and will give us an interesting look at sugi that we've seen also before and about Shlichud in general. So let's begin. We're in Daf Kaftar Amud Aleph. The Mishnah says, "Hamevi get me medinat hayam bechala, osa shaliach bebedinu meshalcho, v'omer lifnei b'fanai nechta b'fanai nechta, ben shaliach acharon zayich sheomai b'fanai nechta b'fanai nechta, milo omer shaliach bedin an." The Mishnah is describing a very interesting situation. A person was sending a get to his wife with a shaliach. And now the shaliach is sick and the shaliach cannot do the deed of the shlichut. So he can put in, instead of him, another shaliach, he could be a man and a second shaliach instead of him. And the only thing that the Mishnah said that he should do it inside baking, and the reason for that, we'll see, you'll see later in the sugiah, that is not our main focus. And a lot of questions arise when we look at the situation between the three people, the meshaliach, the first shaliach, and the second shaliach. So the main question that we want to ask ourselves is that when the Meshalech, the husband, gave the Shaliach power, he gave him all the power that he had. That is true. So now this Shaliach can make a new Shaliach and give him power also. Now the question is, is the second Shaliach as powerful as the first Shaliach and has all the energy that the first Shaliach has? Or maybe he's lesser than the first Shaliach because we have the Meshalech, the Shaliach, and then underneath, a weaker shaliach, the second shaliach. And that is the first question that the Gemara asks, Rabbanan asks uh, Avimi. Amgulei Rabbanan Avimi bereid Rabbi Abau, Bau minei me Rabbi Abau, shaliach de shaliach mashvei shaliach olu. Okay, what was the question asked to Rabbi Abau? Shaliach de shaliach, can he do a shaliach himself? Why is that an interesting question? I think it really... That's to the point that we just asked. If the first shaliach is a strong shaliach and the second shaliach is a weaker shaliach, maybe the second shaliach can't do a shaliach himself. That's only a privilege that the first shaliach has. He's the only one who has the power to do so. Or that the second shaliach is as powerful as the first and therefore he can also make a shaliach himself. So that's a very interesting question. But Abiyah Ba'u says... That's not a question because the Mishnah actually tells us already the answer. So Rabbi Abel says that's not a good question because the Mishnah gives you the answer. The Mishnah, you, you were in a dilemma whether the second shaliach is as strong as the first shaliach. The Mishnah itself tells you that the second shaliach can do the same deed as the first shaliach because the end of the Mishnah says, "Ve'ena shaliach ha'acharon." Tzarich sheyoma. It sounds that there are not only two shlichim here, but this can also continue to another one, another one, another one, because the word acharon means even forever and ever. The number does not matter, and therefore the Mishnah itself claims that the second shaliach can create a third shaliach and. Regarding our question, is the second shaliach as strong as the first? It sounds that the Mishnah gave a straight answer. The second shaliach is as strong as the first shaliach. The Sigliya continues in an Ika de Amre, which is dealing with the same thoughts and questions that we have. So I want to jump to the Memra of Rav Ashi and an interesting thing that Marba Rav Ashi says on his father. Because this discussion really relates to the same issue that we were discussing in the beginning. Amar Rav Ashi. Rav Ashi says, if the first shaliach dies, all the other shlichim lose their power. So according to Rav Ashi, it sounds that the first shaliach is still stronger than all the others. Why? Because all the other shlichut is from his original power, and therefore when he's dead, nothing can happen, because he's actually the one who bestowed his power to all the shlichim. Amar mar ba Rav Ashi, ha de abba de katnutahi. The 
So Mabra Rabashi is cholik on his father, and maybe he thinks that his father also changed his mind because it says, my father said this when he was young. It's not right. Why? Because obviously the strength does not come from the first shaliach. It comes from the mashaliach. So it doesn't matter if the first shaliach dies. The mashaliach is still there to give the power to the, all the other shalichim. So when we look at Mara Baravashi and Rav Ashi, we see that this is a repetition of the question, what is the uh, relationship between a first shaliach and a second shaliach? First, we asked ourselves, who's stronger? And the Mishnah said, they have the same strength. The second shaliach can do exactly the same as the first shaliach can. Not that his koach shichud is lesser than the first. But here, Mara Baravashi asks, once the second shaliach exists, did the first shaliach disappear, evaporate? Or is he still here? And according to Ravashi, it's more than being still here. He has to be there to continue allowing the shlichut to happen because if he dies, nothing happens. So Ravashi thinks that the shaliach, even though he moved his power onwards, is still a very important person in the situation. But according to Malba Ravashi, it sounds as if the minute that the shaliach gave his power to another shaliach doesn't make any difference anymore. He has no say in the deed. Even if he's dead, he's irrelevant. So also when he's alive, he's irrelevant. Now, is that what Marbar of Ashi said? Or maybe we're somewhere in between. So let's look at interesting according to the Rishonim that will show us that halakhically, we're somewhere in between Marbar of Ashi and Rav Ashi. So let's look at this. First, I want to look at Rambam. It says the Rambam, I'm pasking like Marbar of Ashi. המביא גט ממקום למקום בארץ ישראל וחלה, או נאנס משלחו ביד אחר, וכן השני עם חלה משלחו ביד אחר, ואפילו מאה. ואין צריך עדים לחזור ולעשות שליח בפניהם, והאחרון שהגיע הגט לידו, נותנו לה בפני שלם ותתגרש בו, אף על פי שמת השליח הראשון. So we're prosking like מר ברבשי and not like ברבשי. Even though the first שליח is dead, still the second שליח can do his deed. So does that mean that when the first שליח made another shaliach, he's irrelevant. It's as if he evaporated, he went to play golf. He's not of any consequence or relevance to this shlichut. Let's look at the Shulchan Aruch. In the Shulchan Aruch, we have a different statement. The Shulchan Aruch says, Imet shaliach sheni. Yachol shaliach rishon, itlo mi yorshav shal sheni, v'yolichenu v'sholchenu b'yad achir. So the Shulchan Aruch, let's look at a different situation. What happened if the first shaliach made a second shaliach, and then the second shaliach dies? The first shaliach, says the Shulchan Aruch, can reclaim the shlichut. What does that mean? That he's still relevant and active, not like we thought after we read Mar Baravashi. And the Taz says, you should understand this deeply. Why is this the case? דאם תאמר שנסתלק הראשון, לא אבל לחזור לתלו מי יושב בעל שני ולגרש פה, אלא ודאי דהשליח הראשון הוא ממש במקום הבעל. says the Taz, this is true not only if the שליח השני is dead, also when the שליח השני is alive, the first שליח can come to him and say, listen, I changed my mind, I thought you're my שליח, now I'm being מבטל your שליחו, give back to get to me, I will bring it to a different person. Because, says the Taz, the first שליח, is like the husband for the for the the first shaliyah for the second shaliyah is like the husband for the first shaliyah. So we see that somewhere we're in the middle. On one hand, if the first shaliyah is dead, the second shaliyah becomes fully empowered and he's not connected to him. But as long as he's alive, he is as strong as the husband in the eyes of the second shaliyah. So we're somewhere between Ravashi and Marba Ravashi. Now, we're ready to continue to the Ktsot. The Ktsot is a very famous parish that was written on Choshen Mishpat and not on Eben Ezer. But, as we well know, Shlichud is also relevant to Choshen Mishpat. And in Choshen Mishpat, the Shulchan Aruch is Pasking, Siman Kuf Pei Chet, Seif Bet. The Deen of Shlichud, which is, seems very simple, Oseh Adam, Shaliach, Ish or Isha, Afilu Eshet Ish, Afilu Eved Veshifcha, Ho'il Vem Bnei Dat, Veishna Bekzat Mitzvah, נעשים שלוחים למשא ומתן, אבל מי שאינם בני דק והם חרש שוטה וקטן אינם נעשים שלוחים ולא עושים שליח אחד הקטן אחד הקטנה. 
says the Shulchan Aruch, a shaliach can be somebody who has that. You don't have that, you can't be a shaliach. And it means cheresh, shote, bekatan, katan, because they don't have that yet. Cheresh, uh, because the cherishim then did not have that. Different story. The cherishim ayom do have that. Why is that? We won't get into that now. And shote, somebody who does not have that. Okay. What does the ktsot ask? The ktsot asks the following. ראוי לספק, איך הדעה בפיקח בשעה שעשו שליח וקודם שגמר השליח שליחותו נשתתה משליח? מאזין על בתר מעיקרה, ובשעה שעשו שליח פיקח היה ועומד במקום משליח, ואזין על בתר בסוף, והרי בשעה גמר שליחות נשתתה משליח ובטלה שליחותו. זה קצת, אוקיי, understand. If somebody does not have that, he cannot make a שליח. But what happens if in the beginning he had that, and then he became a שוטה? In the beginning of the שליחות he was fine. But then, while the משליח, the השליח is going to do his deed, he lost his mind. This can happen. Uh, in many different situations, somebody fell into a coma, uh, somebody became uh, demented, somebody had, uh, has an episode, and but in the beginning he was fine. So, what is the deen there? Can the continue? Says the so I found a machloket here. What's the machloket? The Rambam on one side and the Tur on the other side. So, instead of reading inside him, let's look at the two Makorot and see where the machloket lies. The Rambam and the Torah are in Dafka El Chod Gerishin, and they talk about a get, because this is very relevant to a get, what happens if a husband gave a get, and then he becomes a shota. The Rambam says, Amal Kshur Bari, Kitvu Get Vetnu Li Ishti, Achar Kach Nivat, Mamtidin Ad Shavri Vekotvim Enot Nimha, Ve'en Tzarek Lachzor Valimalech Bo Achrashi Ivri, Ve'en Katvo Menetano Kodem Shavri, Are Ze Pasul. So as the Rambam, if somebody was fine when he said to, to give the get, okay, that's good, but then, if it becomes a shote, you can't give the get. And if you did give the get, the get is pasul. It's very important to understand when the Rambam says get is pasul, he means pasul mit rabbanan. How do I know that? Because the Rambam in the same parak, Perik Ben Al-Chazayin said that. I'm reading, Uma ben pasul lebatel, shekol makom shenemar b'chibur ze beget shu batel, u batel min ha-Torah. Kol makom shenemar pasul, pasul mit ibre soforim. So, so, so listen, the Rambam here said that even if the Meshaleach does not have his mind anymore, the Shlichut is fine with the right now. There's only a, a Dinda Rabbanan here which is saying you cannot give the get. What kind of a Dinda Rabbanan? So, 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 because we don't want people to think that Shotin can do Gitim Begirushin. So that's why in Gitim Begirushin, we were more careful and have the special Dinda Rabbanan. But, Midera Raisa, it's a good Shlichut, and therefore in Dinda Monot, where we don't have that problem, the Shlichut is fine in such a situation. And said the Ktot, that is true in the Rambam, but the Tur is Cholek. Why? Because the Tur, when he's talking about giving a get in such a situation, says the get is nothing. So the Machloket between the Ktot and the Rambam is as follows. According to the Rambam, it's only Psul de Rabbanan. In the Raita, it's Kasher. According to the Tur, it's Psul de Raita, and it's Batel de Gamre. Nafkamina. According to the Ktot, the Rambam Shita means that in the name of Mono, where you don't have to stand the Rabbanan, the Shlichut will be totally kasher, even if the Meshalech fell into a coma. Continues the Ktot and says, I want to take this further. Says the Ktot, I think the Shlichut of Adam Kmoto, not only when he lost his mind, can he continue, like I proved to the Rambam, also if the Meshalech is dead. He can still continue the shlichut. How can that be? We have a Mishnah that says, in the Sefer Gitti, Nafi Gimel Amud Aleph, HaOmer Tnu Getze Li'ishti, Shtach Shechur Tzeh Le'avri, Vemet Lo Itnu Le'achar Mita. How does the Ksot deal with this? So the Ksot says, listen, you know, you want to understand this Mishnah, you have to read Rashi. So let's go and read Rashi. Rashi, in the Sefer Gitti, Nafi Gimel Amud Aleph says, Lo Itnu Le'achar Mita. Why? Says the Ktot, you might think I'm crazy when I tell you that Shlichu can continue after the death of a person because there's a Mishnah that says that you cannot do anything after, after the Meshaleach dies. But this Mishnah talks Davka about Gitin and Gitin Nashim and Gideh Avadim. Gitin Nashim and Gideh Avadim, there's a totally different issue. Let's look at a woman. There are two ways that a isha konai tatzma, begetu bemitat abal. So if the husband dies, the reason that you don't give a get is because she's already not married. Not because she's megurashat, because she's an almana. 
So that's why you can't give her a get. You can give her a get, but it has no meaning. She's already an almana. The saying goes to an Eved, says, look, so when somebody sends a get, she would use Eved, as long as he's alive, he's, he's Eved. But once he's dead, he's already the Eved of his Yoshim. So he has nothing to say about that Eved. The point of the Ksod is that this whole Mishnah that says that you cannot do the Shlikud after death only speaks about Gitin. Gitin have a special issue with them because they are severing the connection between a live person to another live person. But if the first person is dead, the connection has already been severed and that's why the get has no meaning after it has been given. So therefore, says the Ksod, you should know that even after death, Shlichut works. Continues the Ksod and says, I can prove this from the Sugi and Kaftet. V'chen nirei la aniu dati mucha. Ve'afilu achal mitata meshaliach shlichut lo batel ve'nichnas ha-shaliach achal b'mkomo. Ve'hakai malan b'shaliach shechala do se shaliach achal. Uka mevoa v'perek kol aget. We just learned in our Gemara that a shaliach that is sick can do another shaliach. And afal gav de shaliach sheni mikoch shaliach ha-rishon ba shaliach de-rishon hu. And we know that the Shaliyah Hashani gets his strength in the first Shaliyah. How do we know that? Because the Taz was passing that if the first Shaliyah is alive, they can take away the Shlichut. We learned that. Even though after the Shaliyah Harishon dies, still the Shaliyah Hashani continues. So that proves, says the Ktsot, Ela vaday de Shlichut lo batel afilu charmot rishon. Betama de matniti na nizkeret de lo itnu lachar mitayin umishub de pakar rishutei uke acher. Dami. So let's sum up the Ksot. The Ksot said, okay, you think that dead people can't do stuff. Why do you think that? Because you think Shlichut is battle after death. Why do you think that? You think that because of the Mishnah and the Fugima. But you don't understand. That Mishnah is talking about Daf Gitin. And Gitin is true. This specific Shlichut cannot take place because once the Mashalach is dead, the connection has been severed. But Dafka, if you learn Dafka, you find that the Shaliyah Hashani gets its strength from the first Shaliyah because the first Shaliyah can, can take back the Shlikut to him. And even if the first Shaliyah is dead, still the second Shaliyah can continue. So that proves that Shaliyah can go and continue even after the Meshaliyah's death. So again, says the so this is a machokot between the Torah and the Rambam. This works only if we think like the Rambam that if a person is nishtata, uh, then the get is only puzzle and not is only puzzle and not batel. According to the tour that learned from a whole different set of mikorot, that if a person does not have his mind, the shlikud is batel, that 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 ruins the whole mailech. Why? Because if a person doesn't have that and the and the get is batel, so kalvachomer, if the person is dead, the get is batel. But if you think like the Rambam, and you think that Shlikut can continue even if the Mishalach doesn't have his mind, and you connect to that Rashi in Gitin Yugimel and our Sugiya, and what was passed in the Shulchan Aruch, that the first Shalich that can still take away the power from the second Shalich, then you reach this very surprising conclusion that Shlikut can continue Le'achar Mita. Again, only if you're going according to the Rambam, not if you are according to the Torah. And the Ksot says that he tends to understand Shlikut that way. So according to the Ketzot, we can continue Shlichut for people who are dead, as long as, it is, as it's not Kitin and Kiddushin, which have only just a specific problem in them. So what we did today was really not our usual. I, I really thought that this was a good uh, opportunity. You learned the Ketzot because he uses our Surya as part of his proof uh, for a very, very famous and surprising Mailech. And is this Mailech agreed upon? So the answer is no. But um, if we look at the Ketzot, we see that, at least according to the Ketzot, all the Shlichuyot in the world, except for Gideon and Kiddushin, can continue after death. And therefore, if we're doing things in the name of dead people who are shocking us to do all kinds of deeds, for example, to do Masin Tovin, to learn Torah, and other things, we are, in a sense, continuing their legacy and actually continue their lives because we're Po'olim from the Koch of the Shlichut, which hasn't been passing, even though they have passed from the world. So this is a very, very interesting way to look at Shlichud in general and Dinema Monod and also in other Shlichud in the world and a very famous Ksot. So, okay, we did something special, a little different today. I hope you've enjoyed it and Vezrat Hashem, we'll be doing more interesting things 
next week. So we'll see you later, and I hope you continue enjoying learning this Masechka and Dinesh Lichud specifically. Take care.